We're going to talk about uh, why it's important to measure load resistance and in which situation makes sense to take this measurement. We will also cover what factors you should consider when choosing an instrument to measure load resistance and what are the best practices when doing this test. Well, and jumping right on topic, I would like to start answering the question, uh, what is a low resistance measurement? Whenever we are measuring resistance values below one ohm, uh, we consider those as low resistance. And we should be aware that when that at those very low levels, we are going to face a few challenges, like the influence of the test lead resistance. Uh, also, if we the, the poor test lead contact, and if we have a different joint be between different metals, then we will have thermal EMS developed in in the junction. So. Those are some of, of the, the challenges that we will face when making these measurements. So now that we know what a low resistance measurement is, uh, you are maybe wondering, why, why should I measure this? If we recall from Ohm's law, we know that uh, for a specified energy source operating either uh, AC or DC voltage, the amount of current drawn will depend upon the resistance of the circuit or, or, or component. Identifying those resistance elements that maybe have increased above any acceptable value will help us prevent long-term damage to our equipment, uh, minimize energy wasted as heat, and ultimately will help us ensure maximum efficiency of electrical components. Some of the problems that uh, we can detect are degradation between contacts, for example, in a circuit breaker or a disconnect switch, excessive vibration in motors, for example. Uh, in the straps of a battery system, we can detect chemical corrosion or loss of torque in, a, uh, in connections, for example, in bus bars, in substations. Of course, uh, we should note that these problems that I just mentioned are not limited to, to the applications that I just said. And in most of the cases, uh, we can have a combination of them in, in our application. Now, let's talk about a little bit more about those applications. Uh, take motors, for example. Um, we don't want to have adjacent coils uh, coming shorts between them or open circuits. So we can use low resistance testing to, to look for those conditions. And additionally, when we train the resistance values we get with those states of, over time, we can identify the effects of overheating in our motor or generator. Now uh, take, for example, a, a Pretty easy example. If we have a reel of insulated copper wire, it might have a tag indicating the wire gauge and the resistance per unit of length. Or let's say the tag has been removed, we can just cut up a small piece of cable, measure its resistance, and now when we measure the whole coil, we have a factor to calculate the total length of the wire we have on that drum. In industries that consume vast amount of electrical power, low resistance testing is a must. Uh, let's say, for example, we have a bus in a substation and it's carrying 12,000 amps of current. If our bus has a resistance of one micro ohm, for example, the power dissipated in that bus will be only 144 watts. But let's say we have a problem in one of the junctions in that bus bar and the resistance changes to 100 microohms. Uh, one may think that change is not a significant one, but at that um, level of current, if we calculate the power dissipated in that case, it will go up 
up to a 14,400 watts. So uh, high resistance not only causes unwanted heating, but it will lead to energy losses, which increase operating costs. Or in other words, uh, we will be paying for energy that we are not actually consuming or using a good use 